Project 203 is make your own battery. I'm going to connect this two snap wire between points Y and Z over here. Nothing happens. But now I'm going to connect it between points X and Y and the green LED comes on briefly before going out. When I place the two snap wire between points Y and Z, I actually charged up the C5 capacitor. And then when I move the two, two snap wire over to the left, I discharged it, allowing the LED to briefly light up. Now this is make your own battery too. And I'm going to repeat the same procedure that I did with the previous version of this circuit in which I place the two snap wire between points Y and Z and then move it over to points X and Y, but the green LED only blinks and that's it. That's because the C3 capacitor stores a lot less energy than the C5 one. For project 205, make your own battery three, I kept the C3 capacitor from the previous project, but replaced the R2 resistor with the R1 resistor. Repeat the same procedure as in the previous two versions of Make Your Own Battery, but this time the LED blinks for an even shorter time. That's it. That's because the R1 resistor provides less resistance and therefore the current that was stored in the C3 capacitor dissipates much faster. I'll do it one more time, charging up the capacitor, and now I'm discharging. This is tone generator. When I turn on the slide switch, you hear a high frequency sound. This is an example of a high frequency os oscillator circuit. For tone generator two, I place the C1 capacitor over the whistle chip. Now the pitch is lower. That's because when you place the C1 capacitor over the whistle chip, the whistle chip will actually act as a capacitor since it's in parallel and with increased capacitance, the frequency of the sound is lower. For tone generator three, I replaced the whistle chip and C1 capacitor with the C2 capacitor, and now the pitch is even lower due to yet more capacitance in the circuit. Finally, for tone generator four, I replaced the C2 capacitor with the much larger C3 one, and now you just hear clicking sounds from the speaker. Here is more tone generator. I modified and expanded onto the previous uh, to the circuit used in the previous four projects and I'm going to turn on the slide switch and you hear a middle frequency sound as the LEDs come on although it sounds more like a high pitch frequency sound to me. And I'm just going to go right over to more tone generator two. And I am going to put either, you can put either the C1 or C2 capacitor on the whistle chip. Now the frequency lowers due to added capacitance. But let's see what happens when I put the C2 capacitor on. The pitch of the sound is even lower. And now the LEDs appear beyond steadily, but they're actually blinking at an extremely fast rate. So fast that you can't notice them. And for more tone generator three, I am going to place the C3 capacitor on the whistle check and watch the LEDs. As the speaker makes a clicking sound, the LEDs blink simultaneously, like strobe lights. This is music radio station. 
You'll need an AM radio for this project, as you will for the next subsequent one, but music radio station is very similar to radio music alarm, which I demonstrated a little while ago. You're going to tune your AM radio to a space on the band where you can't hear any station being broadcasted, and then you'll turn on the slide switch. You may need to tune the capacitor as well, but you should hear music playing on the radio. It clears up and then it's gonna repeat itself. For alarm radio station, I replace the music I see with the alarm I say, and then when I turn on the slide switch, you'll hear a machine gun sound on the radio. And the red LED flashes. Here is standard transistor circuit. I'm going to have the adjustable resistor set to its mid-range, and then I'm going to turn on the slide switch. The red LED comes on, and it's not very bright, but when I move the lever on the adjustable resistor toward me, the LED goes out, but when I move it away from me, it becomes brighter. This circuit is considered the standard transistor configuration for amplifiers. The adjustable resistor control would normally be set so that the LED is at half brightness because this will minimize distortion of the signal being amplified. This is motor and lamp by sound. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and the motor and L2 lamp will come on. Now when I shine light on the photoresistor, the motor slows. Then when I put my fingers in front of the photoresistor, the motor and lamp turn off before coming back on a few seconds later. One more time. And there you have it. This is Fading Siren. I am going to push the press switch and you'll hear a siren that quickly fades away as the LED turns off. The fading is caused by the C5 capacitor, which is charged when I push the press switch. Now to reset the circuit, you have to place the C5 capacitor between these two points, A and B, and then once it's discharged, you would place the capacitor back where it was and hold down the press switch again. Now for the subsequent variant, fast fade siren, you would replace the C5 capacitor with the C4 one. Let me just make sure it's discharged. And then I'll place it here. Sometimes you have to orient it the other way. And it charges much faster. So the siren does not last as long. The C4 capacitor holds less energy than the C5 one. This is laser gun with limited shots. I'm going to hold down the press switch and you'll hear what sounds like a laser gun firing. Now, if I hold down the press switch, eventually the sound will fade away as if the laser gun is running out of ammunition or actually the gun runs out of energy and the energy pack has to recharge. The C5 capacitor reassembles that component, the energy pack, and 
I'm not sure exactly how long you'll have to wait. They say just a few seconds, but it seems to take longer. But you don't actually have to do anything else with the circuit. Well, for the capacitor to recharge so you can use this gun again. Once it's fully charged, you can hold down the press switch again. You could also shoot long repeating laser bursts or short zaps when you tap the press switch. Once again, you have to be careful because the gun will eventually run out of energy, but you will be able to fire for a longer period of time if you do it in short bursts. This is Symphony of Sounds. I'm gonna turn on the slide switch and you'll hear a combination of sounds from the music, alarm, and space were integrated circuits. You can also push the press switch and shine light on the photoresistor while waving your fingers to change the space war sounds. Pretty interesting. You can have a lot of fun with a circuit like this. Now, for the next project, which is a variant of this one, you can replace the speaker with the whistle chip in case it's too loud and now the circuit will be much quieter. You can still shine the light on the photoresistor and wave your fingers and push your push the press switch. The music and alarm sounds are barely audible, but you can hear the space war sounds pretty good. For transistor amplifiers, I am going to place my fingers between points X and Y on the circuit and the red LED comes on. In this circuit, the two transistors, the Q1 and Q2, amplify the very tiny current that goes through my fingers, my body, to turn on the LED. For pressure meter, I am just going to apply light pressure to points X and Y, and the LED may flash or light dimly. It's hard to just apply very slight pressure, but if I do, the LED won't be on at full brightness, and pressing hard will make the LED bright. Technicians call this contact resistance. For resistance meter, I am going to first place the R5 resistor between points R and Z. I'm not going to actually snap it in, but just place it across and note the brightness of the red LED. Next, I am going to press the R3 resistor above. Do you notice a difference in brightness of the two LEDs? The LED may actually get slightly brighter with the R3 resistor than the R5 resistor, despite the fact that the latter has more resistance. And this is because the MPN amplifier receives more current at its import put when the resistance is lower. The PMP amplifier is not used in this project. This is auto off night light. When I turn on the slide switch, nothing happens, but when I push the press switch and release it, the red LED comes on and then it will gradually go out. It might take some time. Then after it does, when I turn the slide switch off and back on again, nothing happens. That's because the C5 capacitor has charged up and the MPN transistor can get no current at its output to turn it on. And this would be a great night light because let's say you had to uh, wake up and maybe 
see something that is near you, like a clock, and you can just push the press switch and turn it on, and then the light will turn off by itself after a few moments so that no more current is taken from the batteries even if the slide switch is left on. For discharging caps, I'm going to turn the slide switch off and then push the press switch for a moment. That will discharge the C5 capacitor. Then when I turn on the slide switch, the light will come on and the delay repeats. It's kind of like the reverse of what I did in the first project. When you short a capacitor with a low resistance, the charges on the capacitor will leave through the resistance, which in this case is the press switch. This is changing delay time. I replaced the C5 capacitor with the C4 one. Now, when I turn on the slide switch, the red LED will go out far more quickly than it did with the C5 capacitor. And I'm going to push the press switch and once again, watch how fast the LED goes out. The C4 capacitor is approximately five times smaller than the C5 one, meaning that the LED will go out five times faster. This is Morse code generator. When you push the press switch, you will hear a high pitch sound and the red LED will come on at the same time. This is how you might communicate to someone next to you using Morse code. Morse code was the method of communication before the telephone was invented. Morse code uses a series of dots and dashes, or in this case, plus signs and minus signs to represent the various letters and numbers that are used in communication. And for international code, a short tone is represented by a plus, well, a long tone is represented by a minus sign. And here's the guide for communicating in Morse code using the different letters and numbers. For example, if I want to do A, I would first push the press switch quickly once and then immediately press it for a longer time. If I wanted to do B, I would push the press switch once for a long time and then push it quickly three short times. For C, I would do one long time, one short time, one long time, and one short time. And there you have it. You can just go from there. Hopefully, you'll understand how you do. And then, like, for, let's say, the number nine, I'm going to do four long times and one short time. It uses this circuit to communicate to a person who is right next to you. You could also teach someone Morse code in a very simple way. I'm sure in real life, sending messages by telegraph was a lot harder, but it's simplified with this circuit. For LED code teacher, I replaced the speaker with the R1 resistor, and then now we don't have to worry about the loud sound. We can watch the LED and how long it stays on for each of a series of pluses and minuses to know what letter or number is being sent to us. In this case, I am going to do I, which would be two quick pushes, and I'm also going to do R. Now, can you guess what? letter this is. It's U. Once you have learned code, you can replace the speaker. This is Ghost Shriek Machine. Now, I don't know if it really makes the sounds it's supposed to, but I replaced the R2 resistor with the R4 one and the C2 capacitor with the adjustable one, the adjustable capacitor, 
And then when I hold down the press switch and move both the uh, adjustable and re the adjustable resistors and capacitors, you'll hear like a ghost-like sound. On some settings, the sound may be faint or stop altogether. So this is really just a partial demonstration. For LED and speaker, I am going to use the circuit from Project 228. And I am going to, what you would do is try to find someone who already knows Morse code. And then they could use the circuit to send you a message and you'll see and hear the message via the speaker and LED. It's probably better to do this in a dimly lit room so that the LED is easier to see. And amateur radio operators often still use Morse code today to send messages around the world. I'm just going to send the message, hello. Here we go. Those are the combinations of sounds and flashes for the word hello.